You are a painter. You work sort of in this 20th century Cubist contemporary vibe. Um, why don't you just tell us a little how you got started on that? And uh, Sure, yeah. So, uh, to be honest, like, in a nutshell, like, an early influence probably was, like, Norman Rockwell, like, on a high school level. Okay. Like, that was kind of art to me and kind of something like, oh, I could... Uh, get my head around, so to speak. Um, I guess what college should be for was that that's like when I had really good professors being like, uh, look at Philip Gustin or look at Picasso, mm -hmm. things like that. And then this sort of uh, my library, if you will, of like imagery started like opening up yeah. uh, to sort of that more Cubist realm and kind of more I don't know, intellectual. Imagery, and you you sort of have these characters within your paintings. How do you sort of develop those characters, or is, do they have like backstories, or, or are they just sort of mm. self reflections? Or? Yeah, uh, it's it's a really good question. They it it changes a fair amount, but much uh, like in my daily life that I pull from, uh, there are sometimes like veils with the imagery veils. Uh, and certain like boundaries that I don't need the viewer to know, but it's an everyday reality of like kind of a Charlie Brown kind of idea of mm -hmm. either stumbles and falls that like are an everyday kind of human endeavor, but also like my own kind of trip falls is like just going about through life. So characters, while occasionally are kind of like nebulous imagery, have connections with that kind of. Um, everydayness and things like that that I'll encounter, but also kind of um, connecting with kind of the crazy sort of imagery of like a Peter Saul imagery or a Philip Gustin. And like this that. has always been a part of your practice. So Lisa's, Lisa's introduction to your work, do you happen to remember the first piece that Lisa bought from you? I do, yeah. Oddly enough, for in this like hot summer, she bought a painting called Iceman, mm -hmm. and it's a it's this pretty like crazy figure. It's a relatively small painting, maybe like fifteen by fifteen inches, and it's this monstrous figure that is chopped up in sort of like delineations of like yellow, blue, and red. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a painting in this Arts and Leisure show, uh, part of Freight Volume Gala that I had a show in 2016. And this was the first time that you had met her? Yes, yeah. correct. So you yeah, had, yeah. you'd never heard of her before, you just happened to, like how did you meet? I met her, I think so, a mutual acquaintance of ours who was in my community, uh, very much an art enthusiast, um, and someone that was like socially around and also a collector himself, he was the person that sort of was like our connector point. Mm -hmm. um, and he brought the show to her attention, which while I feel really proud of that it was a strong show, it was an uptown show. You, you had like through word of mouth, someone probably would have had to tell you about the show. And it was through him that uh, he brought uh, my work attention more or less to to Lise. And then, yeah. so so as you know, um, having an artist collector relationship can be um, different across the board. There tends to be this stigma of um, collecting art is very intimidating and going to galleries and mm. sometimes even just approaching an artist can be intimidating for a collector. Sure. How does that compare to sort of the relationship that you have with Lise? Uh, it's a good question. She she does seem or, or has been an anomaly in like the collector sphere and the collectors that I've been lucky enough to have. She does stand out as someone that uh, has you know she's got her own life and she's got a very interesting busy life. But she sought out uh, to have uh, a personal connection with me, and I had the. The pleasure to be in her apartment and see see her collection firsthand. Uh, more than a few artists that I knew um, personally, but it was cool that also through our mutual acquaintance and this other artist that there was like that connector, sort of like that bond. Yeah. Which you don't uh, you don't really see that often amongst like the collector artist relationship. Um, would you say that it's not only an anomaly but is a good thing for the art world 
I, I think so. And, and much in like getting to know Lise, the idea of like removing the veil of being intimidated by galleries and things like that, uh, like she seems like all about that in a very genuine and original way. Like she's, you know, um, she's going to like the things she likes. She's going to also uh, forge relationships with artists and things like that. Um, so I think it's all for the best. Yeah. 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 And so, so, it's how has your work sort of progressed since you've met these? Because obviously, these are fairly large imagery compared mm. to the work that's in her collection. Yeah. How? What's been going on? What's what has been developing? Uh, it's a good question. Like, I can see connections with certainly like figurative impulses, like any of the paintings going around you. So, I'll I'll discuss the differences. Like, connector points are still similar. Uh, or straightforward ideas of cubism, everyday anxiety, things like that. Um, but yeah, that was a, re a relatively small kind of intimate uh, painting. Um, what's probably happened since then, uh, however much putting like a finger on it, is building the narrative for me, which is largely like a school trope, but uh, having multi-figure uh, compositions, having them interact with one another. Um, I had a show after one that she collected from called Comedy Cellar, which was uh, taking like the imagery from my first show, arriving at the point which was largely singular, um, singular like figure painting to paintings that had, if they had one figure, there was like a full environment in that figure. So. Basically, getting to a point where there's multiple figures interacting with each other on a relationship almost basis, but also figures or still life environments that are in their own world, like building the world, I guess. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've once, uh, once read that you see painting as sort of a performative act. Do you, do you still sort of work that way? Is that still a part of your process? Uh, it's a good question. I or probably in some of my bios, I did stand-up comedy for a short time, which was like really? a part of, uh, it has been a part of the work and then I've let it go. Um, but yeah, I mean, largely, I mean, the, the paintings and the artists that I liked and have always been just sort of obsessed with, like de Kooning or Philip Guston, while uh, I do, like there's, there's a quasi difference of like, I also want to like go back to my observational roots and things like that, mm -hmm. but that I also want to have a tight wire act of some level of performance when I'm painting and with the canvas sort of or things like that. Bring yeah. them together and create sort of a story within a painting. Yeah, yeah. 